Father.com forward slash who's your father. Let me say happy father. All the fathers stand up. Come on. Heroes. Look at this. In a black, predominantly black church, all these men, white men, black men, Hispanic men, just men. Praise the Lord. Happy Father's Day to all of our heroes holding it down for their families. Amen. In a time where the world rejects male leadership and any sign of male leadership they consider toxic. But thank God we know who God made first and who he gave dominion to. And we know why he made woman. Amen. And I don't demean you as a woman. Amen. But you just better know that the man is the head, according to the Bible. How do people read stuff in the Bible and skip over stuff? Just, oh, well, that part, see, Paul was having an episode. <laughs> what? Amen. Amen. But we love our women. We respect the mothers and all that. But we already had Mother's Day. It's Father's Day. Amen. All the money I spent on children. <laughs> children expenses. I know y'all like to keep having them at ABC. But oh, somebody need to count the cost. That gets expensive. I only had three. Man. You know, we went on our trip, and <laughs> it's so funny. We went on the trip, you know, our whole family, our family, Landon, uh, Jonathan, and my wife, and Vicki Camp, and their parents, uh, Bishop Logan and all them. So we was all just hanging out, and man, they just expect us to pay for everything. <laughs> they sitting around coming up with ideas. Okay, just planning stuff. Oh, yeah, okay, we're going to go do this and that and this. Has anybody looked at the price sheet? Jonathan had his whole day. Okay, we're going to go to the aquarium. Then we're going to go see the dinosaurs. Then we're going to go. I'm like, nobody is checking the price list. <laughs> it's, a ba it's vacation time. It's vacation. What does that mean? What does that mean? a lot of folks and you got to pay for everybody's food oh lord <laughs> no nah, we had a good time but it's it's good to aim and it's good to be able to do that though that's a man's job and it's a man's job to say we can't afford that i thank god i didn't have to say that but amen there was a time there was a time when we were eating spaghetti spaghetti was the five dollar meal remember that and I, we just go get the sauce in the can, the, the package of noodles, and the meat in the tube. The tube meat, with all the blood when you cut it open. Y'all don't know nothing about the tube meat. And it better have the reduced sticker on it. Half of it is already cooked for you. It's already brown. Y'all don't know nothing about that. See, y'all don't know nothing about that. Folks see what you have now, they don't know. They don't, they just don't, they don't know. That's what we ate. That was our meal, we go get the Pepperidge form uh, garlic bread. And I'd cook it. I'd go in there, man. Benny Hana. Oh, that's, that's Japanese. Olive Garden. With that $5 meal. And it fed us. Fed him. Look how big that boy is. He was, he was eating something. They didn't care. I mean, we did what we got. And that's the limit. I mean, now I can go and they can eat what they want or whatever, but it wasn't always like that. Amen. Don't you be trying to do what I do now. I'm 50, about to be 52, and you in your 20s and 30s? Ain't nothing wrong with a $5 meal. And quit trying to shop at Whole Food all the time. Oh, well, I got to get the organic. Oh, we didn't have no organic. Did you hear me say canned tomato sauce? Ain't nothing organic in a can. We couldn't get the Prego. <laughs> the jar. 
We have to do what we have to do, man. And you have to do what, look at somebody say, we got to do what we have to do. Look at somebody say that. We have to do what we have to do. You know, for now, you don't know what the future holds, but you do what you have to do now so you don't mess the future up. And I'm preaching without slides. I don't need these slides. <laughs> it's just practical. But you just have to take your time. Amen. You got children and child support too. Boy, you better eat, you better get the, the spaghetti meal. Amen. Your wife would like it if you didn't dog it out. Oh, eating all this junk. <laughs> Nobody's gonna like it. <laughs> Amen. But don't you go in debt and stuff and mess your future, huh? Take your time. Thank God I came through all this food stamp. I came out of all them years and didn't owe anybody anything. Amen. I did right. Amen. Look at somebody and say, who's your father? Okay. Mm -hmm. Our society is trying hard to delete the role of fathers in the home while demonizing masculinity altogether. Y'all notice all the new superheroes are women now. They're replacing all the men with superheroes. They're not even comic book history correct. Gotta have a tough woman acting butch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the men. Just because they demonize masculinity. Whenever men stand up, for their homes or just stand up and be a man. They consider that toxic and abusive. But it's not men they are, and I ain't talking about being toxic and abusive. You know you can do that too. Amen. I'm not talking about you don't talk to women crazy and hitting and pushing. and You don't get in no altercation with a woman. We find out you was in here pushing some woman, we gonna whip your tail. All these heroes, the security, everything. Amen. Don't get your tail kicked at ABC. Because we don't do that. That's just weak. So it's nothing like that. I'm not talking about pushing around and bossing. We don't boss women around either. Amen. If you're a real leader, a woman will acquiesce to your leadership. Oh, I just preached. You don't have to boss her around it. Girl, get that water. Whatever you have to do that, you're a bad leader. You got to yell and come out of yourself to get something done in your house. <laughs> that means nobody's respecting your leadership. You're lousy. You're just a lousy person. Don't be abusing her. You ugly thing. Get in there. <laughs> and if he call you ugly, you know what you tell him? You married it. You married it. Let's see how ugly I am tonight. I'm going to show you ugly. I mean, the Bible calls you one. It says you're one flesh. You're just beating yourself up. You're talking about yourself. You are spiritually and literally, because that's your decision. Amen. So you respect, we respect women. Don't get mad and go off and all that. No, we respect them. But we do know that we are the head of the home. So the weight of it lies on the man. A woman's body wasn't even designed to carry the weight of a home. And I appreciate you single mothers in here. You're doing what you have to do. Do what you got to do until something changes. You have to do what you have to do. But that's not God's ideal order. Amen. Amen. But it's not men they're after. So society is trying hard to delete the role of fathers in the home while demonizing masculinity altogether. But it's not men they are after. It's the spirit of God they're trying to stop. That's all this is about. The spirit of God. The Bible tells us in Mark 3 and 27, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong woman. No. He must first bind the what? Strong. Strong man, and he will what? Spoil. The devil is trying to spoil the house. 
He spoils the house by doing exactly what Jesus said he would do. Bind the what? Strong man. They've been trying to delete the man all throughout the history of the United States and everywhere else. Delete him. Delete him. Whenever a society, a society rose up and became pagan, they would have a figurehead king who was under the control of a queen. She wasn't under, if she wasn't under control, I mean, if it wasn't under control of the wife as a queen, it was under the control of the mother of the king. Check your history. Check your history. Yeah, always some witch. And every society where that rose up in crumbled and was torn down. They never last because the Bible, look at somebody say the Bible said. Because the Bible said. If you want to spoil the goods of your home, that country, or wherever it is, bind the what? Strong man. I, I, I feel like I'm preaching. All right. Before the return of Christ, the Spirit of God comes to turn the hearts of the fathers where? Back to the children. How do I know this? Because when the announcement of Christ was to come, in, uh, when he would, was to be born, and Christ was to come in the flesh, the Bible said that there was one that was coming before him that had the spirit and power like Elijah to bring the hearts of the fathers to the children. What is that? He's ready in the people for his entrance. And just like he did in the New Testament when Jesus was born, he's going to do the same thing. He's doing the same thing now. It's our ministry. Reconciliation to fathers. Reconciliation. Amen. How many of you reconciled with your father since you've been here? Men. Look at that. Women everywhere. Yeah. Some, some, some people in there hadn't talked to their father in years. But that reconciliation, that's preparing our hearts for the return of Christ. You can't have bitterness and hatred in your heart when Christ returns because to Christ, that is sin. It's a sin to be bitter. It's a sin to be angry. And it's a sin to carry hatred. Amen. Quit looking at the big sins. The old axe murderer. And oh, you, yeah, you call that a sin. The whiskey drinker. <laughs> and you carrying hatred. It's all sin. So be before the return of Christ, the Spirit of God comes to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. This is what Satan is what? It's what he's trying to reverse. He's trying to reverse what, this, what the Spirit and power of God is going to do. Luke 1 and 17, speaking of John the Baptist, and he shall go before him, pre pre preparing the way. He was called to prepare the way. And the Bible describes it as him going before Christ in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready a what? People what? Prepared for the Lord. He's doing the same thing now. Preparing his people for the Lord. Turning the hearts of fathers to their children. Amen. The world has created myths that children do not need their fathers. And that all strong men are abusive and toxic. That's the world. Y'all know the world is gay. They promote the LGBTQ and all them other letters. You know, the LGB flag got the Negro colors on it now. Yeah, it used to be the rainbow. I ain't never looked in the sky at a rainbow and seen brown and black in the rainbow. I don't even know you can project that on, in the sky. You ever seen that? Leave God's rainbow alone. Amen. And if you knew what you was doing, they're mocking the rainbow. They're mocking it. The devil selected the rainbow purposefully. It's not a coincidence, and it don't mean multicolors and all of that. It don't mean any of that. They selected the rainbow as mockery of what happened in Genesis 6. Mocking Jesus, I mean God's promise that he would not destroy the earth with a flood again. So they mock, they're mocking that. But the Bible tells us he's not going to use water again. What is he going to use? Fire.
but they're promoting the LGBTQ agenda to distort gender roles. This causes this generation to be insensitive to the purpose that God has given them. When you mess with the gender roles, people don't know who they are and how to live their lives. Men don't know they have dominion in the earth. Women don't know that God created them for a man. They don't know that male and female created, created he them and blessed them and called their name what? Adam. They don't even know. When I do weddings, people come up to me after weddings. I just did a wedding. I think this guy came up to me. I think he was the, yeah, he was a photographer. He said, man, I've seen weddings. Just, I've seen hundreds of weddings. I, that's what I do. I take pictures of weddings. He said, I've never heard a person actually, actually explain what the couple is doing when they get married. He said, yeah, this is the first time. He said, I've heard all kinds of, and he cussed. He said, but I ain't never heard a preacher explained. <laughs> I'm like, oh, whoa. <laughs> he said, I've never heard a preacher explain it because I explained I explain that. Even the uh, created he them and blessed them and called the name Adam. Why you take the man's last name? Because that's how God blessed the couple. He blessed them with the man's name. And people don't even know that. They just like, they just say it and now women keep their name with a hyphen. <laughs> I wish you would. what? <laughs> but they, they do that because society is telling them to do that, and they don't really even know the meaning behind it. I changed my name. Why do I take it? They don't even know. God did that first. <laughs> they promote the LGBTQ agenda to distort gender roles which cause this generation to be insensitive to the purpose so this whole generation is insensitive to the purpose that God has given them Romans 1 and 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient they were being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness that's 2021 maliciousness full of envy murder debate that's 2021 full of debate like you can't even witness to somebody without them coming back with something being filled with all unrighteousness fornication wickedness covetousness maliciousness full of envy murder debate deceit mal uh, malignity and whisperers y'all know that's a demon that whispers Whispers folks business and gossip and tearing people down. Whisper. <laughs> breath always stink. Your breath stink if you're a whisper. Because what you're saying is funky. <laughs> Did you hear? Bruh. I can hear it, but I can't see. Look at somebody and say, don't be a whisperer. Amen. Quit gossiping. God made man in his image and likeness so we could adapt his ways and function as his representatives in the earth. You know how we represent God in the earth? By functioning in our roles. The first thing God made when he made us was our roles. You want to glorify God as a man? Get a job. Take care of your family. Do what God did. It will glorify him. Folks think the only way I can give him glory is in the church. Ah, I just are going crazy. No, you give him glory by letting your life be exemplary of him. You, exhibit, you are made in his image and his likeness, so you need to reflect him in the earth. Our world is trying to change this and give their God-given image over to the image of Satan. That's what homosexuality led. That's all that is, a person trying to change who they were and who they are and who they were born to be. This is done through fear, deception, and sin. Romans 1 and 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the 
creator. That's what they're doing now. It's all about the creature, the person, the people, offending, council culture, all of this stuff. Who you're hurting, who you're offending. Don't say that. Don't say this. Don't say Some of this stuff needs to be said so folks will change. I wish y'all would listen. When we practice sin and give ourselves over to it, we do what? Change our image into the image of the devil. So when we practice a sinful lifestyle, we change our image from what God wanted for us to what the devil wants from us or for us. Amen? That's why we don't live in sin. Look at somebody and say, don't practice sin. He becomes our father and we mirror his behaviors instead of God's behavior. John 8 and 44. Ye are of the father, of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a what? Murderer, Murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and he's the father. Man, if you being of your father, like Jesus said, the devil, your father is a liar. And you know why he's a liar? Because he's telling you you're somebody that you're not. He's telling you that there's a deficit in you that's going to hinder you and you won't achieve what God has for you. That's the kind of father he is. He tears down who you are. Your hope of becoming who God said. He'll take the deficits, the missing father in the home, the missing mother, whatever you went through, the abuse, the neglect, whatever you went through, the devil will constantly use that to make you feel inadequate. Like something is wrong with you that's not wrong with other people that are successful. Or that are, or it's not wrong with other people that are doing well. Something's wrong with you. And he'll keep saying that to you. I remember that old song, Don't Let the Devil Ride. Don't you let him ride, because if you let him ride, what is he going to want to do? He's going to want to drive. And oh, if he's driving, y'all going to hell. <laughs> he can go. He only knows one day. His GPS only has one address. <laughs> 666. <laughs> the Bible said that he was a murderer from the beginning. Amen. So Lucifer's desire was to be lifted up above God, and he does this. Listen, now his desire in Isaiah 14 and 11, you remember when he said, I will, my stars will be lifted up high above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. All those things he said in Isaiah 14 and 11. His desire was to be lifted up. So the way he does it, he knows he can't do that in heaven because he got kicked out for thinking that. Right? He thought he could do that in heaven, got kicked out. Now that he's on earth, he believes he can do it, and this is how he does it. He does this by ruling over God's most precious creation. You know who God's most precious, precious creation is? We are. We're his most precious creation. We're all that matters to God. Yeah. Heaven and earth shall pass away. That means heaven and earth don't even matter to him. It's going to pass away, but he's going to preserve us forever and ever. We're his most precious creation. So if we're his most precious creation, in order for Lucifer to be lifted up above him, he wants to be above him in you. Now, so he wants to be high and lifted up in your life. That's, how, that's the only way he can do it. When we serve sin... We are under Satan's rule, and he accuses us of being his instead of belonging to God. Satan's dirty. So he'll get you under his rule and then go tell God, see, they belong to me. The Bible says he does it day and night. He's the accuser of the brethren. Romans 6 and 16, know ye not. That to whom ye yield yourselves servant to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death or of what? Obedience unto righteousness. So when you yield yourself servant to the devil, you become his servant. Can I preach an old-timey holiness message? Okay. 
what we do. Amen. The devil knows if people become insubordinate and lawless, they will not honor God as their father. Hmm. This is why they are sparking all of this hatred, protesting, all of this stuff, because the devil knows once people cancel the police and defund the police and just become insubordinate and lawless, they're not going to honor God as their father. Just as so many are hateful, vengeful, and unrepentant toward their earthly fathers, they will have this same disdain for God. So the devil wants people to hate their earthly father. That's where it starts. If you hate the earthly father, you'll start disrespecting authority. You'll start hating authority. You'll start hating masculinity and calling it toxic. And then you'll start trying to feminize God. Like they do the paintings of Jesus with the long hair and the, you know, Michelangelo and those guys' depiction of him. They feminized it, made him look, you know. No, Jesus went there and tore a whole, tore some tables up. I know he wasn't slinging hair like that when he was tearing the table. No, but that's somebody's, somebody wanted him to look that way because it makes him, you know, soft. But Jesus was meek, not weak. Amen. There's a big difference. But yeah, you'll begin to do that. Then, then they'll start saying God could be a he or a she or whatever. I saw on the Fresh Prince. I never knew that was on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air where they did the prayer and they said, ah, man. And little Ashley said, ah, ah, woman. And thank you for bringing this family together in love and peace. Amen. Amen. Our woman. That's on an episode of the French Prince. Yeah, but they have to effeminize him because this disdain for their fathers, earthly fathers, this hatred for their earthly fathers is eventually going to become hatred for the biblical God. Now, they'll create a God. They'll create an image of God in their minds. It won't be the biblical God. The biblical God going to make you act right. Yeah, that's why they veer away from him. He has roots. Revelation 17, 13, and 14. These have one mind. This is our time. Y'all pay attention to this. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, king of kings. Now, the reason I put this scripture in here is because I believe that we are seeing the gathering of those that have one mind. Amen. I've been preaching about the hive mind for 20 years telling y'all the connectivity and how they're going to connect us all and how they're going to have the one world mindset. Everyone's going to be thinking the same thing. Everyone's going to be tethered to some kind of device and that vice is going to be outputting a message from the powers that be to get everyone thinking the same thing. This is what they tried to do on the, with the Tower of Babel. God stopped it because it wasn't time for the world to end. Because even God said, if I let them continue doing this, they will achieve it. Isn't that what the Bible said? It said they would achieve it. So he confused them by confusing their languages. Well, now they have Google Translate. You don't have to know someone's language to communicate. So they're building this one world mindset all over again. Everyone tethered together. The one world alliance. The hive mind all your information in the cloud manipulated by them the powers that be they're all coming together because they're going to make war with Christ when he returns now, I know you say now who's going to fight against Christ they hate him now church folks hate him saying he's the white man's God they are lining up an army that is going to try to fight against the king of kings and the Bible didn't even go into a whole lot of detail. It just said, oh, they're going to do, they're going to make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. I mean, who are we talking about? That, I'm sure the writer wanted to say, now who are we talking about? Yeah, but it's coming and you can tell it's coming. They are making war. Many claim to be servants of God, but their behavior is against him. 
carrying hatred, malice, and revenge in your heart is not, look at somebody and say, that's not of God. You can't be of God carrying hatred, malice, and especially what? Revenge. I want my reparations. <laughs> Critical race theory, all this stuff. Just, uh, you, you carrying revenge, brother, in your heart. It's not of God. His spirit brings deliverance from these sins and is not a catalyst for them. So when you feel with his spirit, you feel with his love, his joy, his peace, his long suffering, his gentleness, his goodness, his faith, his what? Meekness, Meekness and his self-control. Those come from the spirit of the Lord. So if you're walking around with hatred, malice, and revenge, you don't have the spirit of the Lord. His spirit counters that behavior. Galatians 5 and 22. Amen. Amen. To serve God is to try to live a lifestyle that reflects him. His feelings are your feelings. And his commands are your boundaries. Woo, this is serving God. You want to serve God? Make his feelings your feelings. Now, you want, the way you know his feelings is you have to read his word. Amen. You can't be reading Ayanna Van Zant's book and know God's feelings. Because she don't know what she's talking about. And she's a witch. No, you have to know what the Bible said. So that you'll know his feelings. You'll know how he feels about it. You about to fornicate? Read how he feels about fornication. What's wrong with it? Why can't I have me a little something, something? What? Don't you understand that that leads to immorality? That may lead to some kind of other sin. That's a sin against humanity. It's a sin against your own body. And there's a reason it's a sin. Because it messes stuff up. It messes stuff up. So you can't just decide what you want to do. You have to know how he feels about it. And you know that by reading his word. Amen? And then his commands become your boundaries. That means I'm not going outside of this because God won't like it. You need to train yourself to think that way. Oh, this is going to upset God. And I might need something from him. <laughs> but his feelings are your feelings. His commands are your boundaries. Serving God as your father requires you to repent, turn from sin, and prove you are truly like him. You know you have to prove it. Lord, thank you for filling me. Prove it. God, thank you for coming into my heart. Prove it. Prove it. Thank you for saving me, Lord. Prove it. Look at somebody. Oh, no, there's no proof. Here. No, there you. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Hey, look at somebody say, examine yourself. What do you think an examination is? That's finding proof. Well, if you say you're saved, if you say you feel, your behavior ought to reflect it. You ought to prove it. You say you're saved and you're allergic to the Bible? You got to prove it. 2 Corinthians 13 5, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Do what? What's the next part? What does it say? Prove your own selves. Look at somebody and say, prove it. Prove it. I remember we used to get saved when we were young. We'd get saved in the house just to avoid a whooping. <laughs> and it wouldn't work. But sometimes it would mess us up for what we was going to do. So we say we saved, and then we want to go do something. And our mom said, remember you said you saved now. You know, oh. Dog, I should have took the whooping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to examine yourself. Know ye your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you just a reprobate. Summary! This was a good message to me. I know it wasn't a typical Father's Day and all the fathers encourage you and you go for it. No, 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 no. We need to make sure we all have the right father. Amen? Sometimes our earthly father didn't do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes they weren't where they were supposed to be. Sometimes they caused a bunch of grief in our life. Whatever the case. But if you're under the heavenly father, you're going to forgive. You're going to move past that. 
you're going to make sure for your children that they have exactly what they need. Summary! It's a long summary with pictures. Today, multitudes of people are uh, uh, multitudes of people struggle with sin and shame because of the absence of a true strong man in their upbringing. It is a father's job to be like God in their homes and guard the hearts and minds of their offspring. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. I love when you're here. He know all the right claps. I know he grew up coaching. <laughs> It is a father's job to be like God in their homes and guard the hearts and minds of their offspring. Just as God protected his people from the plagues that the world suffered. Y'all know the whole world was suffering plagues and God's people was chilling. Chilling. Darkness everywhere but with God's people. That's something. Black darkness. The Bible says it was so dark you could feel it. But God's people just... I see you. I see you, man. What's up? I see you. Just chill. Man, God had it. Had his hand on his people. Always does. So just as God protected his people from the plagues that the world suffered, a father should do the same and offer protection to his own children. Amen? Yes. But the devil has destroyed marriages, promoted immorality, which that's where a lot of children are born, out of immorality. That's why God didn't want you to do it. Promoted immorality or caused many men to fail at properly guarding their children. This has created a generation of lawless children or children with severe deficits because they were abandoned, neglected, unclaimed, or abused at the behest of a wayward father. And that father was probably abused himself and that's how he became wayward. The enemy did all of this to change the very purpose of God's creation. I believe, this is what I believe, I believe the devil felt that if mankind would turn against God like he did, then God would reject man as he was rejected. Why would you be an accuser of the brethren if you aren't doing it to get the people rejected? But Jesus died so that this cannot be so. Amen. The devil crazy. God is not going to stop loving his creation. Jesus came to save that which is lost. In our church and many, in our church, ABC, and many churches all over the world, God is restoring the place of the father back in the home. Amen. The world don't like it, but look at somebody and say, who cares? Will you let us be ABC? God is restoring the place of the father back in the home. He is healing the broken children that suffered from bad fathering. Is God healing the broken children? God is doing what? Or oh, bad mothering. It ain't just fathers. It's Father's Day, so I'm talking about that. But sometimes it's bad mothering too. Amen. And no telling what she went through. But God is doing what his word promised in this last hour. He is preparing us for Christ's return by sending the spirit and power to reconcile the fathers back to their children. He is preparing us to be with our father God. How are you going to be, how are you going to ha have an issue with your earthly father and be reconciled to the heavenly father? This is just a rehearsal. Because when we get to heaven. <laughs> I got to sing that for offering or something. <laughs> but he is preparing us for Christ's return by sending the spirit and power to reconcile us. He's preparing us to be with our father God by helping us to be with our earthly fathers. To understand our earthly fathers and to love them and respect and honor them. Not hold their, we're not holding their sins against them because we all have sin. Amen. The devil wants you to be with him and feel like he feels. I don't want to feel like the devil feels. That can't feel good. To know you're going to hell 
to know you are hell. I, that can't feel too good. I went to Arizona for four days and it was 118 degrees. Walk up to the car and the devil opened the door. <laughs> Have a seat. It's hot. Man, it was so hot. You couldn't get cool. Car cool down when you get to where you're going. It's so hot, you sit in a restaurant or something eating with air condition, sweating. I'm like, why am I inside sweating? Because the air condition knows that it's hot outside. That's hot. <laughs> so I don't want to be with the devil if it's that hot. I don't want to be with him no way, but especially the heat. I know heaven got an air condition. You think you can work on some AC, Bri Brian? Just wait till you get to heaven. You're going to have the heavenly tube belt. <laughs> I know it's some wonderful air in there. Ooh, some good water. My lips drying up now. Let me go get some. <laughs> I done talked. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want to be with the devil where it's hot. But he wants you to be with him and feel like he feels. That misery I always love company. Especially when somebody does something stupid and they buy themselves stupid, they need, they need, they need a, a witness. And you know who's gonna be with them. <laughs> so he wants you to hate your father as he hates God. So the devil wants you to be with him and feel like he feels. He wants you to hate your father as he hates God. He wants you to lash out, steal, kill, and destroy as he does. He wants you to say and do things that, you, that will cause shame and regret to keep you from truly feeling the love that God has for you. It's hard to feel the love of God when you're feeling guilty because of stupid stuff you keep doing. The devil wants to be your father and wants you to feel the rejection of God like he does. Can I keep preaching? Yeah. But Christ came to change the way you feel about yourself. He came to give you, amen. He came to give you a way to please God so that you can feel his fatherly love. Please hear me. Pay attention. No matter what you went through or who was missing in your upbringing, no matter how many times you were disappointed or let down, no matter how many mistakes and failures you experienced, no matter how many times you have fallen and disappointed yourself, no matter what kind of shame, regret, or guilt you are feeling even now, none of it matters if you accept the love of your Father God. Amen. He loves you. He loves what he made. Why are you tearing down, looking down, and speaking down on what he made? He knows what he made. And he said what he made is good. Why is your opinion against what he made? He's God. He don't make mistakes. He doesn't mess up. He has no error. So he knows what he made. And all you have to do is accept him as your father and reflect him in your life. It's not too late for you. Second John 7 says, For many deceivers are entered into the world, and this is where we are now, who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and a what? Antichrist. So look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. So he's not your father if you don't accept Christ's doctrine. Amen. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ 
he hath both what? The Father and the Son. Everyone stand to your feet. Yeah, we want to make sure. See, I know this is a Father's Day message, and it's usually pointed toward us as fathers in here, but God is our Father if we accept the doctrine of Christ. So it don't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter what's lacking, who's missing, what your earthly biological father may have done, may not have done, should have done. None of that matters at this moment. You have to be reconciled to him and then be reconciled to God. God said when you stand before him praying, first do what? Forgive. Forgive. Said in another passage, when you bring your gift before him, set your gift down and go be reconciled. So for him to be your father, you got to be reconciled. So I'm going to pray for you today and I want you to come up if there's some lingering feelings, regrets, whatever it may be toward a father, toward, you know, a male figure. Somebody may have done something to you. I don't know what it is. And we don't want to know. We just want you okay. Let this Father's Day be the last time you deal with that in your heart. So just come up, whoever it is. Full forgiveness. I need full forgiveness for my father. I need full forgiveness in my heart. Come on. I don't want to be carrying around something about somebody. It don't have to be your father, about anybody. I got to let this go. Father's Day, let, let this Father's Day be the day you commemorate this. I got to be right. I got to forgive. I have to move past it. I have to let it go. Well, my father may have passed and he may not be here. And I got things. Well, you, you give those things to God. You give them to God today and let it go. Let it go. Don't carry resentment in your heart. Don't carry it in your heart. God is preparing us for Christ's return. And he does it by reconciling the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. John the Baptist, Jesus called him the greatest prophet there ever was. We see all the stuff Elijah did. We see all the stuff Elisha did. We see all the stuff all these prophets did in the Bible. They did great things. And John just stood flat-footed and preached. But it was what he was preaching that made him significant to the point that Jesus called him the greatest. He prepared the way for Jesus to come. He prepared the hearts of people. And that's what this message is doing, just preparing your heart for the return of our Savior. So everyone just bow your heads. And we're just going to just get it in your heart right now and ask God, just forgive me, Lord, for carrying it, whatever it is, hatred. Even not just a bad understanding. I don't understand how he could do that. I don't understand why he did it. I don't understand why he did what he did. I don't understand why he wasn't there with me. I don't understand why he didn't show me love. And I, I just don't understand. So, God, I don't need to understand. All I need to understand is what you said. I need to let this go and be the example that my children will need. Be the mother, be the father that my children need. So I excuse him. I let that go. And I don't want that part of him. I want all the good and I want to do what he wished he could have done. Not spitefully, but lovingly. Let me complete it. Let me make it right in the name of Jesus. Just pray that prayer to him right now. Father God, I let it go. I let it go right now. Get it out my heart. I let it go right now. I leave it right here. On this Father's Day, I make you my Father God and I give you my heart. Deal with it. Take it away. In the name of Jesus, every hurt, every expectation that wasn't made, Every lie that was told, every disappointment, when he said he was going to do this and didn't, when he said he would do that and did all those feelings, things I saw, things I heard, whatever it was that I'm still holding on to, God, I pray right now that you would take it from me so that my heart can be clear, clean, 
in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray, everyone just lift your hands. Father, I pray for those that have come up, those that are watching this online, just whoever it is, God, I pray right now that you will continue, even after this message, to prepare their hearts. Father God, continue to just give them the forgiveness they need. Give them the strength they need to forgive. Give them the courage they need to reconcile. Father God, take away all malice, all revenge, all hatred, all bitterness. Father God, and bring the fruits of your spirit in its place, God. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance so that we don't act out things that were done to us. Father God, so we don't do to others what was done to us. But Father, that we use your spirit to change our behavior so that we can reflect you as our Father in this last and evil hour. And we give you glory and honor, Lord, in the name that is above every name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, look at somebody. And tell them I don't have hatred in my heart. It's all gone. Forgiveness. Just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. This stuff will pre prevent you from getting married. It will prevent you from having children. This stuff will mess your life up. Don't you carry this. Let it go. Let it go, all disappointment, all hurt, let it go in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. Come on, give God another praise. Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. You know, God's going to continue to work on us in this area. You know that, right? Because once you leave here, the devil start bringing other stuff up. We just got to stay right here. Because he's preparing us for his return. Amen? So he's bringing it up. It don't feel good. You get mad at me. I see the way some of y'all look at me. That's all right. You ain't mad at me. <laughs> let it go. Look at somebody and say, let it go. Amen.